PVE builds. You want a strong, consistent build for Call to Arms and all other content? Well, I got you. Setups for different Deadeye cards, ability cards, weapon choices, and how to play each build? I want to go over all of that today. But first, I want to quickly credit Captain Balric in his spreadsheet that I will link below for any numbers that I use. Let's hop right in. For PVE builds, I want to limit the amount of tonics I need to drink. So I value recovery cards very highly. But if you plan on drinking tonics, damage cards and defense cards gain value. Now let's get into your ability cards. I have a build for each Deadeye card and the choices will be made off of how often they'll be effective. The main two recovery cards in every build will be Strange Medicine and Eye for an Eye. These will be the backbone of the majority of the PVE builds. Strange Medicine gives you health based off the damage you deal, with headshots healing you for around 20% of your max health. Eye for an Eye restores 20% of your Deadeye on headshot kills. And the third passive card is usually a preference based off your Deadeye card. My main picks for these have been Cold-Blooded, Iron Lung, and Fool Me Once. Cold-Blooded heals you for 10% of your health over the next 3 seconds after getting a kill. Fool Me Once gives a stacking 10% damage reduction on hit with a 10 second duration. This is also a great pick if you're going to drink tonics, and Iron Lung provides damage reduction up to 10% based off your stamina while giving you stamina regen. The damage cards that you could use instead of recovery cards would be Sharpshooter giving you 20% damage increase while looking down a scope, and Winning Streak increasing damage dealt on consecutive hits. Quite an inspiration and Painted Black are in my opinion the best two choices for PvE Deadeye cards. I've solo completed Call to Arms with both of these cards with little to no tonics. So my Painted Black build is Eye for an Eye, Strange Medicine, and Cold Blooded. It's a build that becomes self-sufficient with just painting headshots. You can use your Deadeye to paint headshots or remove the bloom from your weapons. If you're confident landing headshots, this is a great build that you won't have any issues with. You will rarely have to drink tonics and you won't need damage cards. My Quite an Inspiration build uses the same passive ability cards. This card will heal you and your posse for 4% of your max health per second. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you'll see how impactful it is really quickly. You could play this without Cold Blooded and sub in any of the other preference cards, but I stuck with Cold Blooded because of its consistency. This is easily the best pick if you don't like Painted Black. A moment to recuperate is good and it plays kind of like Quite an Inspiration. It heals you for 8% of your max health a second, but if you take damage, the effect will cancel. You would go with the same three recovery cards. I use quite an inspiration over this even when playing solo because I don't want to worry about when I should use my Deadeye card. Deadeye cards like Slow and Steady, Slippery and Focus Fire aren't bad, but they aren't the most effective. This could easily change with higher difficulty content or a future introduction of more headshot resisting enemies. Slow and Steady will give you an on-demand 20% damage reduction, which is huge, but you don't need it that often at the cost of movement speed. Strange Medicine still gets used here, but the last two slots could be any combination of Fool Me Once, Cold Blooded, Eye for an Eye, and Kick in the Butt, depending on how often you expect to drink tonics. And probably by the time you need Slow and Steady, you'll be using tonics. Slippery is another one you probably won't need. While being very effective, the duration is very low, but it will save you in a pinch and give you time to reposition. And because of that, I think you should use the same ability cards from the first three builds, while making sure to have a scoped weapon to negate the accuracy loss while your Deadeye is active. You could use it to snipe a high priority target then get back into cover. It has potential, but how things are right now, it doesn't have a place. Focus Fire gives a damage increase to you and your posse. Even without tonics, I'd combine this card with another damage card while keeping Strange Medicine and Eye for an Eye. I made this choice because I don't think Focus Fire is enough to change things by itself. That being said, you could speed things up for you and your posse. Right now, this card suffers from either being overkill or overshadowed. But if you aren't confident in landing headshots and want a more support-esque role, this card does have a place. Now let's talk about weapons. For weapon choices, you gotta keep in mind that all weapons are viable. The weapon type is more important than the weapon itself, and the goal is to cover as many ranges as possible but I do want to give you my main choices for each weapon type. For sidearms, I lean towards revolvers mainly for their ammo capacity. If you're not running Painted Black, you can pick a very accurate weapon like the Navy Revolvers, but you can also keep it in mind that Painted Black can make anything work. The sawed-off shotguns are useful when you don't want to put a shotgun in your long arm slot. The Volcanic Pistol and the Lamont Revolver are also very competitive. The Volcanic Pistol is a pick because it has the highest damage per shot for a sidearm, while also being one of the most accurate, and the Lamont Revolver has the highest ammo capacity of a revolver. For shotguns, the main two picks are the semi-auto and the pump action. The pump action is only second to the semi-auto when using painted black or spamming hip fire. You use the semi-auto with hip fire and painted black because of its fire rate. The pump action is the default choice because of the high accuracy and consistency, which allows it to be used at further ranges. For repeaters, you have two choices, the Lancaster or the Evans repeater. The Lancaster being the consistent pick, while the Evans, you sacrifice some of that consistency to hold more rounds. They cover the mid to long range and can be used with or without a scope. And for the rifles, you have the Carcano and the Bolt Action. The Carcano is viable in all builds, sporting the highest long range damage per second with bigger scopes making headshots easier to get. The Bolt Action rifle is very underrated. Having one of the longest headshot ranges in the game, solid damage, great accuracy, 
with a scope that you can toggle, all while being great with painted black. It even has a longer paint range than repeaters. Honorable mention goes to the bow. While in Call to Arms, you can use it with dynamite arrows to kill wagons in one hit, and the armored guys in two. You can pick dynamite arrows off the ground after wave 8, leaving you with a chance to use around 20 dynamite arrows in later waves. The two weapon loadouts I've been enjoying the most are the Cattleman Revolvers, the Pump Action Shotgun, and the Carcano, and the other being the Sawed Off Shotguns, the Bow, and the Bolt Action Rifle, but only with Painted Black. And that covers everything for my PvE build guide. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you liked the video. Follow me on Twitch, I go live three times a week. I also have a Discord, links for both will be in the description. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.